Hi everyone, Thomas Moran here from 44 Wide and in part two of our GigaPan series we're going to focus on being out here in the field actually capturing one. Now I have some friends who have been nice enough to let me come up to their building in uh, we're sort of midtown Toronto here looking back on the city. It's a view I really love. It's not the typical uh, from the lake looking up. And what we're trying to do here is just get a whole cityscape, if you will, uh, that is going to replace our 44 by 192 inch shot in the gallery. There's a chance once I got up here, I might even think about printing a bigger on our Epson 11880, but we won't know until we get back to the gallery. Now, what we're going to do is go through the device here. I've gone ahead and set up my exposure. Um, just so you know, we're running at uh, 1 30th of a second. So we're into the danger zone of tripod shake. So I've gone through and taken care of all the settings here, the delayed trigger to try to limit that. Um, I'm just going to go through now, select new panorama. Set the camera zoom. Yep, we've done that. And it's telling me now, it wants me to select the top left-hand corner of the pano. So that's there. Upper left-hand corner set. And now we're going to move it over to the right here. And down to where we actually want to finish capturing. And right about there. So that's, we've set the lower right corner. It's asking me here if it wants to show me the panorama just by moving the camera around. We're going to skip that. So this is going to be a 220 shot gigapan. So camera on. There's a long checklist here we'll go through. Balance locked, exposure locked, focus locked. Yep, yep. We are all good to go. Taking panorama. Now at this point we want to be extremely still. Like I said, we're in that danger zone of about 1 30th of a second here. I can tell you we're capturing 220 frames now. Each one of those is going to open up to about 125 megabytes per file. And then we got to take that and stitch it all together. Um, we got our work cut out for us. And I'll be honest with you, this is the single biggest gigapan I've ever captured. Um, now, something you should realize, by shooting 220 frames, not all of that is going to be used in the final image, of course. What we want to do is capture more than we actually need. We'll open it into a um, Photoshop large document, crop to what we need, and then work on the file from there. The last thing you want to do is realize, oh, I missed the shot just slightly and have to go back and, uh, and recapture. You always want to overshoot these things to be able to crop down to the final shot. So that's the basics of setting the GigaPan up in a field to capture your individual images. Part three of our GigaPan series is going to focus on actually joining the images together in the computer. That's about it, guys, and thanks for watching.